Let's bring into this conversation the former director of cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency, Chris Krebs. Chris, it's good to see you this morning. We're going to talk to you in a minute about the cyber attack on the pipeline, but want to get you in on this conversation as well. I just pulled up your agency's statement on November the 12th to make sure I had your wording right. Quote, the November 3rd election was the most secure in American history. You've obviously studied this and looked at it closer than anybody in the country. So what do you think when you hear not just Republicans in the United States Congress, but governments around the world talking about the need to shore up our elections? Well, uh, first, Willie, thanks for having me on. But I, I do want to clarify that that statement was not me. That was not my agency. That was a coalition of folks that were involved in administering the election. That included state and local uh, election officials. That included other federal partners. That included private sector partners. So that was really a sense of the community at the time that the 2020 election was, in fact, secure. And it was. And it's been recounted in multiple states multiple times. And every single time, the outcome has been consistent. Look, election security here or abroad can be a term that can be used as a sword or a shield. I think what we're seeing right now is the Republican Party Party throughout the country, not just at the, congre the federal congressional level, but in state legislatures uh, and at the party level across the country, they're using election security as a sword to uh, to get, get their objectives. You know, to, to defend why they failed uh, to retake the pre or, you know retain the presidency in the 2020 election. Never mind the fact that there were historical gains in state houses and in uh, the House of Representatives. So something's not adding up there. I think you can talk about election security in a, a positive way as a sore, as a shield rather, and that's uh, to continue to invest in our systems across the country to retire some of the aging infrastructure. Elections aren't perfect, uh, but there are things and there are things we need to do to uh, uh, continue to protect them going forward. But not like this. This is undermining confidence across the country. So, so uh, Chris, just over here, we. Uh, I think most of us have friends who uh, supported Donald Trump. I know uh, that's all I have, like friends and family members. Uh, and, and I'm just curious uh, if, if, if you're going to talk to them and try to convince them that they're being lied to, what, what would you lead with? What, what would be, uh, of course, set in love, what would you say to a friend or, or loved one to say, listen, I, I know what you're seeing on Facebook, I know what you're hearing from Donald Trump, but this is the fact. And what, what would you lead with? So this is really the hard part, right? You know, you want to kind of understand where they're coming from, what they're sourcing their data from. Uh, and so I, I'd ask for, you know, help me understand why you think this is the case. You know, what are you seeing out there? Try to get to the the root of uh, of their concerns and the root of what's what's driving them to these outcomes. But I spend a lot of time in rural Virginia and I see the and I talk to folks and it is um, it's sunk in. It is really part of the zeitgeist in the, the Republican Party these days. And until you see the leadership uh, at all levels, including up to the former guy, uh, admit that the election was legitimate. Uh, I think it's we're in for happen. a rough run here. And you and I both know he ain't doing it. Yeah, he's not going to do it. And it, it has, weirdly enough, when I talk about it becoming the organizing principle, I know it like the, the, the Reagan-Lincoln dinners or the Reagan dinners, whatever uh, they call it in these specific counties. That is what everybody's talking about. The election was rigged. The election was stolen. You see it from the governors. You see it from the state legislatures. Uh, it is so hard to have a straight conversation with somebody because you're right. It's become part of the zeitgeist and the political fabric. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.